Well, that was a rare event. Um, back again. <laughs> uh, all right, I think everything should be back to normal now. <laughs> I Me mean, yeah, that typo was only there to buy time in order to hack into kids of the machine and gain access to Cogmine source code. Very clever. Hey, <laughs> damn. All right, I think I think pretty much it cut off about when I had finished there. I, I finished reading all of that and then realized that it suddenly had cut out. I checked out the alarm stuff here down here, and you would have read it by then anyway. But yeah, and then I realized for some reason my internet crapped out. That was unfortunate. I reset the router, otherwise it might have taken longer. But yeah, once I reset it, it came back online pretty quick. That is does not normally happen. Okay, so yeah, I'm back. We're actually going to get started here now. Um, everything should be running again. All right. Okay, back and time to, whoops, actually play. All right, so I'm going to, I guess, try to use numpad here. Um, let's look around. Oh, what is that? Okay, moving one space over here, we see an ice, ice barrier, 5,819. What is the money um, ice barrier? Why does, I wonder why there's a money value associated with it. Can I right-click on something to see more info? No, more info. Okay, nice to have, be able to have at least a mouse over and, and some info on that. And all right, let's... So hammer here, executable, and I can projections load time. I wonder if I should just load this immediately. Uh, because you can't use it until it's loaded, right? Um, let me, let's just see how that works. All right, we're loading. Starting execution. I don't think there's a drawback to this. No, I have to overcraft you from loss of connection. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, we can move diagonally as normal. Yes, so uh, eight-way movement here. So wait, this here... Hmm. Anyway, that's a that's a bad thing. It just kind of sitting there. I guess it's ready to come out. I wonder why it's got a, a value associated with it. Because that do I get money by like taking it down, perhaps? All right. It says it's now loaded. The hammer zero point one a is now loaded. I'm not quite sure. It said you know time to load was like forty, but I don't know quite what that meant. And so I guess these are these are programs ready to come out. The code gate. Um, one point six four one one. All right, let's keep looking around. What else is out here? So yeah, you know, very Cogmine look with the uh, these the way these machines are done. You know, letter uh, style um, letter machines um, and you know ASCII pieces around them and stuff like that. Uh, what is this here? A login port. All right, so we do want to check this out. So I guess I just bump into this. Here we go. Port interface login port authorized access only. If you're not authorized to access or use the system, disconnect now. Cyberdeck hacking. Press enter to initiate intrusion protocol. An alarm will trigger. Wait, so, I mean, I don't have another option, right? I have to do this, I think. Node 8. Login, alarm triggered, heat updated. So we have a heat plus 1. Wait, did I, do I get anything from this? Do I do it again? No, error. Conflicting operation in progress. What is, uh, okay, we're now actually like connected to that. Oh, and there's no other direction in this room. Do I have to actually go touch one of those ice things now? Oh, whoa, what's this? There's a T thing appeared. What is that? Pup number 4200. What is that? Is that, is the ice spitting that thing out? What is that? <laughs> also, now I've got a line attaching me to this login port. Hmm. Huh. Well, uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. Can I bump this? What does that happen? No. Intrusion progress. Oh, the line's right, right, right. We have to... We're making progress on our intrusion because we have to stay near it. I forgot about that part. It's not instantaneous. This takes time. We are circling around this login port as we get chased by these little program guys, which I guess these were released. Maybe actually the ice is what is released. All right, a hound and a pup. That's cute. Um, I guess the ice is what releases these things. It doesn't, the actual ice doesn't come after you. It's releasing stuff, the other programs to come after you. All right, login port, welcome. Access token allocated. Okay, what, do, what does that do for us? We still have no fame, no cash. We have, what do we do with that? I guess, not actually sure. Wait, what was that? Shoot, there was a star. Oh, do I pick it up? 
what was it? Wait, 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 wait. I think I'm supposed to pick this up. So, and I have a hammer. Can I just attack this program? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to the northwest now. Oh wait, I have to actually activate it. One second. Uh, so if I press Control again, it should use program. Yeah, don't worry, Elix. It's probably. I know you want to tell me, and uh, I know it, you might as well wait and see. And you know, for the experience, because I'm coming at it completely fresh. So it's kind of interesting to see, you know, how someone fresh might come at it. So it's better to probably not say anything yet, but you can t definitely tell us stuff later. Um, so I'd say I'm going to control A here and I try to use my hammer on this thing right next to me. So I have a chance to pick this stuff up. Control A, 78% to take down this guy. Oh, I like that nice. Oh, also, that's right. It has a whole area of effect. I like this nice circle here and showing me yeah, the effects on here. All right. So do I press control A again? Oh, that's right. That's right. I like press one second here. I escape out of that. It's press F to use the first loaded program or F to fire on this current selected targets. Yeah. Okay. Making sure. Got to double check some mess up here. So if we press uh, then just F again, it's going to actually attack this guy. It might just crash though. Okay. What happened there? It crashed. Um, invoked hammer 0.1A. Uh, exited abnormally segmentation fault. So yeah, it crashed. <laughs> Incoming trace attempt. From the pup wonderful okay yeah so pups are there these is, apparently this is a tracer can i not i can't get more info on what these guys oh t is for tracer okay all right there it is t so that's what yeah yeah i need to pay attention to these here i wasn't looking at these letters t is tracers they're trying to trace the connection so okay that's cool these guys are seen are like the lowest level of uh enemies here uh, naturally and yeah they're just increasing our trace here which you can see a little block there and that's what these guys are doing so I should just have ignored him. I didn't really have to use my program there. Let's uh, pick up access token. Okay, we got an access token. Let's look at it. Access token, authentication token, price 70, access level user. Um, and uh, load time of 100. All right, well, um, so how do I get out of here? Do I, can I actually go after the, do I have to like go after the ISIS? Because we're like in a room here and there's got to be uh way out let's see the fire hounds are back that's right where's our spells huh <laughs> they brought pups with them all right so we have an access token um let me see here I'm getting traced by standing next to these guys anyway we're learning the mechanics to begin with anyway also i like the uh font um it works well both the map font and the uh, UI font. All right, so we can run mm -hmm, something boxy, 16, 16 by 16, the Atari ST system font, 8 by 16. Cool. Uh, so even your, your your UI and your map fonts are also using a similar uh, approach or kind of cogmind. Half text is half of the uh, map font. But yeah, I like this. The Atari ST system font, 8 by 16. It looks nice. So that's cool. Um, okay, so I'm wondering if I should I run the access token for some reason? Not actually sure. Let me see. Let's... Uh, we can run that. We can actually incoming trace attempt as I try to do this. Also, I can try to attack these guys again, but wait a minute. It's already loaded. I pressed fire again. Uh, oh, it stays loaded once it's loaded. Okay, okay. I thought once you loaded it and used it, you might have to reload it again after using it. But apparently, no, our hammer is still loaded. And so we can technically keep using it like that. Um, okay. And I'm currently loading the ax the other token, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Can I get out of this? What is this? Error access denied. I guess with a user token we can get through the ice or something. Not sure. Or yeah, I'm not really sure. We'll find out. Trial and error is required. First thing I'm gonna do is try to take these guys out. Another crash. Loading failed. It's already loading. Right? Yes, yeah, right. It starts reloading automatically. So how long? We're gonna find out how long forty is too. Oh whoa, what? I can see through there now. Yo, okay. Our user to our user token is loaded, which allows us to get through. We can now see through here. Can we walk through here too? All right, we can walk right through there. 
What is this stuff in this room? Uh, whoa, that is a core. Oh, it's labeling. Interesting. It's labeling core. Pu oh, it's the core for the pup. Can you like take out the core? What is this core? Why is it labeling a core? Oh, why is it labeling also our dome decker when I put this over the core? Ice barrier. This is a core for the ice barrier. They're kind of like matching cores. Like this is the core for the pup. This is the one. But why is this one for us? I'm not quite sure what that means. That's kind of weird. Interesting. We can just step right through it all anyway. Huh. What is going on? All right. Uh, let's use our hammer again. Finally got one. Oh, wait, what? Oh, we crashed the pup. Okay. We crashed one of them. Incoming trace. We're getting traced in here. Technically, we should be able to pass through this other one now. Yeah. All right. Once you have the user token, we can get through out here. And uh, this ice for the code gate. So the cores, uh, it looks like the cores are matched with other stuff. And for example, later on, we might get programs that allow us to take out cores, which also deactivate these other things. Like we could take out this ice here by getting its core. That would be my guess. Uh, it's interesting though, there's a core attached to you too. So I guess something else could take out the core that you're connecting through or something like that. All right, mister, what are you doing? I'm just letting myself get traced here. We're trying to figure just out basic mechanics, I guess. All right, here's a W. What's a W? It's a worker. Huh. All right. Overall, I like the theme. Uh, worker. Oh, look, that's cool. <laughs> nice uh, machines here with the workers just kind of sitting around in them. Theming's done pretty well. All right. Yeah. Once we get that token, we can see and get through all these. Uh oh, what's this one? We can't see through that, which means, wait, wait, why not? Oh, maybe there's just nothing behind that one. So there's sometimes the ice blocks them. Some, sometimes they're just stuck in walls somewhere. That's what it seems. That seems like possible. Still have yet to find anything else to hack. Uh, looks like we don't, or it goes to work or doing something. Cool. All right. Whoa, here's something else. This is a different one. Data ward. And we don't have access through there, though. Fairly large maps, it seems. And it's, I guess it's nice to not be getting traced all the time. Here's another one. We can't do anything through there. Just nothing behind it. Worker exited abnormal, abnormally segmentation. <laughs> Okay, got a seg fault on a worker. And there's another one there. I guess we can't go through those. Oh, what are these? Still learning stuff here. Garbage file. Service log. Exfiltrated service log, $11 credited. Another one. Oh, okay, service logs, sure. Okay, okay, so those are things we can collect. Gray is stuff we can collect here. Garbage file. Getting make it basically picking up a little bit of credits here. And just got ourselves another access token user. We have two of them. Is there any difference between these? What does this say? Uh, all right. User low time 170. And these look identical. Getting looking at the info for both. I think they're identical. Yeah. Something something great artists steal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it keeps everything familiar. All right, so we do have a token that can get us through those other ones now. All right, yeah. So the second token allowed us to get through there. I don't see a way that matches them. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have it loaded, though. Do I don't have to load this other token in order to get through these other orange doors. Also, I don't see how they're being matched, those tokens, to this one, but... <sighs> Oh, I see. Yeah. Another important mechanic I've missed so far. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ice uh, ice walls can also be targeted by the ice breaker, not just pups. All right. I see. So we could, even if without a user token, we could use our ice breaker here to get th try to get through one of these and just destroy it. That'll probably come in handy, I guess, at some point. There's an 
red thing. An access token opera. What is that going to get us? Operation token for something. Authentication token. Hmm. All right, we made it back around to here. Is there a way to look around uh, the other parts of the map? Maybe not. So there's a couple doors we left behind earlier because we had no way through them. It's a worker blocking the door. <laughs> I guess you can take him out too. All right, looks like there's nothing here. So we got to go check out the doors we couldn't get through earlier. Sounds dangerous and noisy. An operator token, there we go. High level access, yeah, that'd be my assumption. But interestingly, we are, even with just our current user tokens, we were able to get through a yellow and an orange. I'm surprised that these aren't color coded then, or I'm not sure what the, that was, but I couldn't get through orange before. I'm pretty sure I couldn't, but I could get through yellow. But then once I got the second user token, I could get through, but these all both look the same. You can mention what, what, what more about that, Ilix, if you want to, um, just to help out on that in that regard. How did we get access to the orange doors? Was that done through the second user token? I mean, I didn't actually even load it in order to make that possible. So we can get back over to here where there's some more. It's interesting that our older map knowledge doesn't give us info on the ices that we saw there. Oh, this one's still access denied. Okay, so sometimes we can get through and sometimes we can't. What exactly is this one? A bulwark. Huh. No, we did definitely read the sacred text of the help file. Read the ent read this entire thing slowly. It's just not all not all of it's there. I don't think the color coding the ice walls at the level of the ice, which is mainly about exploit resistance, not the level of access needed to move through them. Oh, exploit resistance. Oh, but some of them I can just walk through, and some I can't. I'm not quite sure. All right, I got no processing capacity available, so I'm gonna have to shut down. I have to get rid of one of them. Let's unload uh, unload our hammer and open up our operator token here and then wait and then now we can get right through can we shift click the door to find out the level of access uh no we just hover over it you can't actually is it shift click no that's yeah that's not something you can't actually get more info Invo invocation i failed yeah user is not invocable whatever anyway wait a minute where am i, am I back in the scene wait i can't actually get through wait a minute did i shoot after pressing that now i can't uh oh not good. It, clicking works. I, I should. I. I. You made me right click, and now I can't do anything. I, it's. Uh, I can't move at all. Shoot. I get my keyboard stopped working after I did that. Uh, how can I get back? Go right click again. No, can't get my commands back in the window anymore. Oh, <laughs> feature request via stream. Yeah. <laughs> nope. That's the thing you should probably be able to do. Uh, yeah, for clicking level of access. Yeah, I, I would really like to be able to get more info on these things. That's for sure. But anyway, uh, can I get, I can't get my keyboard back. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. What? No way. Does it have alt key held? No. Control? No. What is going on? If I just press A, it's giving me shift. Is a shift key? Ah, Wow, it got the shift key got stuck in the program for some reason. Huh. I'm not sure why. Never don't normally have that happen. It happened after I right clicked. The shift key got stuck in the down state. Uh, I mean, not on my key physical keyboard, but in the game. It, I kept assuming my shift key was held, so I couldn't do anything. All right. Anyway, the point of that was to yeah, I was gonna look at these again. Um, yeah, there's just different levels. Load time, also similar. Okay, anyway, we're back. Okay, so oh, I can go through here. So yeah, yeah, that's. I was getting confused on the mechanics purely because of that. Okay, this one here is a financial database. So let's uh, hack this thing. Alarm will trigger though. Highly sensitive reports. Um, whatever. We're learning. We'll do it. You can watch. Uh, how long does this take? Oh, what do we got up here? This is. A bulwark and it's sending out Doorman 2.0. Uh huh. I thought this was my engine's fault, but a stuck modifier key is definitely my fault because I handled that. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure why it happened. I had, must have had shift, shift while I was accessing something else and it held the shift. If I tapped shift, at the end, I ended up tapping shift. I thought it was alt, for example, because <laughs> that's messed me up with obviously that in Cogmine has that issue and some other games, but um. Alt didn't do it. it. Turned out to be Shift. I noticed that because when I pressed any other key, I pressed A, and then it pulled up the uh, Shift help for that. 
So I knew it must have been the shift key. All right, there's two ices in here. It looks like we're probably going to need to worry about what else is in here. We just need to get out of his room before... Oh, Mr. Doorman. All right. Initiated forced disconnection attempt. Oh, shoot. Also subroutine. Doorman. He can see us over there. 83%. Oh, no. He's over there. Crap. Oh, no. There's these guys, too. All right. I don't see any other numbers changing because we're being forced. Tried to force out, but I need to... Get around. I'm trying to get just get out of this room, probably. Uh, wait. All right. There it is. Nice. We got the data. Here's some cash. How much did we get? Uh, I guess it'd be nice if they told us, because I don't know what my cash was before that happened, so I don't know how much that was worth. Access denied. Wait, I can't get back out of here now? Oh, shoot. What? I just lost programs? Whoa, what? Oh, the did the doorman just... Wait, what the heck? Inserted hostile. Oh, he just crashed my. I'm stuck in here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. He just unloaded my programs, including the one I need to get out of this room. <laughs> they invalidated our user tokens. I lost one user token and the, and the main operator token, which I guess will allow me to get in here. Wait a minute. Oh, I have another one I could have turned on. Shoot. Uh, all right. Can I get it activated before he finds me? Um, hey there, dude. All right. This is bad. I think he's going to. Stop me. I'm going to attempt to take, to take these guys out. Um, not going to work, huh? All right, our user token's active. Wait, I can't get through there? Oh, shoot. I really did need the other token to get through here. Uh, it's kind of, I guess it's confusing here. I can't tell what tokens I need to get in through in and out some of the doors. It'd be nice if they were, that was, was clearer. Um... Yeah, that was cool. That was an operator door, probably. Yeah, the second door. Oh, that's right, because this was the one I couldn't get through earlier. So orange, again, orange is not actually the level. Um, it's it's the diff it's like their difficulty of, of taking them down, but it's not related to the keys. Which it'd be nice if there was a, a really a, a way to see that. Um, does the name of the door indicate the level? Bulwark. I mean, maybe they're uh, maybe they're in different categories. Like all the bulwarks are level uh, are operator or above or something like that. Okay, Elix says yes. So yeah, if you remember the numbers or the names, so bulwark is going to be uh, we need operator token. But yeah, overall we're going to need uh, that help to have a little more info on that. Okay, so we're stuck here. We basically our only option now is to disconnect, I guess, because we're stuck in the room. There's no way out. That's interesting. Go loud here and hammer your way. Oh, that's true. We could also try and hammer. That's what I just tried it a second ago. It didn't work. Um, we're getting traced. We're about to be max traced here. We've plus three on the heat. That seems terrible. <laughs> uh, I can't take out. I haven't taken out done you know done the logs yet. Could hammer the security. Yeah, I tried. It's we have a crappy hammer. <laughs> Not only that, but couldn't he mess it up? All right, incoming trace attempt, hostile submarine. All right, a hammer's loaded. So if I press this, can try. Oh, I think we just got kicked out. Yeah. Seg fault. Hammer exited abnormal abnormally. And the doorman took out our last token, which kicked it. I guess he also disconnected us randomly there. Anyway, I tried hammering that three times, but it's not exactly powerful. So software here's the software you can buy these like an operator level access token for 250 now, the price is uh so the price is the same that we saw on the items that we did collect um i don't know what these do yet blowtorch 3.1 buckler cracked you're not connected to the emporium browse at your leisure your connection is encrypted with the highest grade of black market secondhand knockoff jailers tech i could find only the best for you chummers Bounties can be found below. Not for cash, of course, just fame and higher rank. So our heat is now four. Wow. So I guess there's... Oh, there, I think the, it did mention there's a way to lower permanent heat in the help. Can we go to the help menu right now? Yes, we can. Uh, there's... Heat is here. Uh, heat is heat, heat of 10. Uh, it was somewhere in here. There's a lot of stuff. It's not under the heat section, but I'm pretty... I recall there's a way to permanent lower your permanent heat. Um, which we can do probably some other programs or some way you can do that in there because otherwise we would get that plus three really messed us up Hammer is indeed bad. Oh, yeah, for sure Taking some notes cool. 
Uh, need to make condition to delete tokens more obvious. Mm. Alarms delete all running ones and disconnecting them all because they're tied to the system you were in. Whoa, whoa, what? Really? Alarms delete all your running ones? Wow. That means you definitely want to unload then, right? I mean, just wouldn't that mean if you're if you're about to hack something and you're going to trigger an alarm, doesn't that mean you want to instantly unload all your programs? Before that, I mean. Unloading also deletes tokens. Oh, unloading a token deletes it. Oh, really? Huh. Uh, yeah, still, uh, we'll have to see. Um... Um, okay. Uh, bounties, bounties. Yeah. Okay. Root, um, root a system listed below upload proof and I'll update your rank. Okay. So rank, rank zero one two fame. All right. Yeah. So you got to go after these. Oh, we can connect. We can choose where we go here. Financial database from JLo's company. Uh, wait a minute. Rank zero. Huh? So I guess that means this is like an easier thing to target because it's not even going to give you any fame. Need some better hacking tools. We definitely need better hacking tools. Um, we're going to be working on that shortly. <laughs> but overall, it seems like a pretty cool game so far. I'm liking it. Um, I guess you don't need to highlight these things that aren't listed here uh, in the menu. Hardware upgrade. Processing stealth. I say Hardware upgrades. Right. So we can have more processes running at a time. Stealth. Add 75 each. How much money do we have? We have 310 from that hardening hardening was what again oh yeah i mean you can read about what each of these does and whether or not we're going to upgrade that process repair processing we're all at max on that so don't worry about it hmm all ui highlights are completely terrible horrifying spaghetti code due to lack of a real ui abstraction ah yeah i mean seven drls right <laughs> and also yeah just uh simple architectures Yep. Uh, okay, so yeah, again, look. I guess we can look at these. Uh, what if I click on this? What's a crack? Um, okay, I clicked on it and we bought it. I wanted to see what it does. I didn't want to buy it yet. <laughs> okay, right clicking. Right clicking tells you what it is. Uh, we already bought one though. Uh, I guess I should see what I bought. Uh, we bought one of these. Can I click on this and see? No. Yes. Okay. Right clicking actually does work on this menu. Buckler cracked class and executable load time exploit. Defense against attacks on your cyber deck. Shield. Defense against attempts to trace your connection. Okay, so if we're running that, it shields us, basically. Heads. Buckler. All right, so that's a shield we can run. And we're now down to 260. We buy ourselves a token. Uh, overall seems useful, yeah. Oh, you can sell it for the same price? Oh, wow. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, you can sell for the same price. Oh, that's, yeah, that's unusual. Uh, in most games, I uh, can't do that kind of thing, but I like it. That's, uh, could be pretty neat. Uh, neat. Also, I guess that's why everything has prices associated and listed when you collect them in a mission. Like, you can come out of the mission and sell all the things you've got that you don't need anymore. All right, let's find out what this blowtorch here is. Uh, what now? All right, this one. Strength 2. Uh, effect is destabilizing programs keep crashing strikes right trace cost it's right using these cause uh, causes trace so it's twice as much as hammer and it, but hammer has strength of zero a blowtorch has a strength of two so yeah it's a lot better right takes a little longer to load targets of projections range six alarm chance 80 percent crash chance much lower oh this is yeah this is overall this actually makes me a lot more confident i can actually take out things oh there's still a penalty for selling something but it only applies after you've actually gone around with it not just bought it in this screen oh i see what you mean um okay so yeah you do make less on the things you bring out or have brought back but you can just on this screen you can go back and forth that's good to know uh So yeah, definitely want to grab one of these. Wait a minute. There we go. Okay, get out of that screen. 165. And I guess technically you can get more than one of the same stuff. Um, yeah, like we can get another shield or start out with the token, which I guess is fairly helpful. Hmm. 
165. 165. I'm just going to take some more stuff. Blowtorch is loud, but it sounds better than Hammer. I'm looking at the stats. Yeah, definitely better. Don't neglect hardware updates. Oh, yeah, I wasn't looking at these purely because... Well, I mean, I guess, yeah. I wasn't actually... I'm not familiar with exactly what the meanings were yet. So I can see, yeah, Cyberdeck stats. So yeah, programs are running at once. We knew that much. We can run two at a time. Uh, how much trace you can accumulate. Stealth seems pretty important. And actually, it seems pretty cheap. Oh, no, that's fixed. Stealth up here. So it's still fairly cheap. Yeah, this seems like a decent thing to upgrade, especially early on, probably. These kinds of things. Um, plus, minus. Wait, what about minus? Minus? Oh, wait, I can make money from that? Yeah, you can. Look at that. Oh, and actually, that's right. I can put this back then. How do I sell this? Just click on it. Yeah, I could just click on that. You can sell that too. And then we can go. I like that. The fact that you can do that. Go back and forth. Sold, credited. Nice. Um, one thing I'm curious about is if you know you can sell things back and forth for the same, but what about this? Like, could I could sell this for the same amount that it was worth or something you brought back? Because if so, they would kind of need to be indicated here, whether it was something you got currently or it was something you acquired elsewhere. Oh, this should be made obvious if the shields don't stack. It takes it takes the max. Yeah, I assumed actually that shields don't stack. The only reason I bought two is because I had a lot of money. And apparently enemies can take out your I mean enemies can take out your programs too, right? So if you lose one shield, you still have a backup. <laughs> Ice first fire heat theme we have going with the items like a blowtorch. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. So anyway, looking back here to, yeah, stealth seems important or oh, redundancy. So I'm getting more info on these now that we can actually increase them. Can we spend to, res spent to restore corrupted programs? Hmm. Spent to repair damage stats is hardening. Damage stats. Okay. Anyway, well, stealth seems most important for now. Let's do a stealth. In fact, we can do two stealth. All right. And stealth is down here. I don't, I mean, we don't know exactly what the numbers mean, but just doubled our stealth. So... You know, we can, won't we'll get traced as easily, at least. Um, processing, I don't need to run. I, I guess processing is also kind of important to have maybe a third because you've got to have at least, you're going to often want a token or at least one token running and maybe another kind of shield or weapon. But eh, I'll just leave it at that for now. And then we can connect to one of these. I assume these will be more challenging, the higher ones. Um, and this one doesn't even give you any rank at all. Just go for this. Even though it's still learning, probably should just go for this one. But we'll just find out what this... Uh, go for this financial database. Your connection has been recorded. Heat increased up to five now. And I guess this color is changing because it's no longer uh, low. It's already halfway up there. Okay. And we have no token, which means we have to hack something. Because we didn't bring any token. So we start with one here. Yeah, I'm going to log in. So I guess it's kind of nice if you do this. If you bring a token, your starting room, you won't have to do this. I'm guessing all the starting rooms look like this. All right, we probably should load something. Let's load. Uh, I guess we can load our. Uh, well, we're going to need to load the token, I guess. So let's load the low torch. It'll take a little while longer to load. I guess one thing we don't know is. Shoot. All right, here they come. Ooh, it's a doorman. I hate these guys. Oh, that's a, it's called a guard, but he's a kind of doorman, right? A guard. Pop. And hello there. 60%. I wonder how far we can get from that thing. I think I just lost it. No, okay, we got the token. No, wait, what? Login port, access token allocated. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. It drops it over there, doesn't it? Mm. Anyway. Uh, oh, no, it drops it at your feet. Oh, I forgot about that. All right, here we go. Blowtorch, this guy. Um, blowtorch, 88%. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. You have to pick your target. Oh, yeah. Tab to targets. I was thinking it was everybody, and I completely forgot. You can only pick one target. It's not everyone. So I can blowtorch the doorman. I wonder how long he'll stay dead. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that's it. Very first time. Got someone. Um, wait a minute. So oh, wait, I can just blowtorch again. It was loaded, not used. Yeah, I guess that increases trace. So you then, all right, I'm getting out of the hang of this now. All right, blowtorch this guy too. 
There we go. Access token user. All right, so I do have to load this, I believe. Yes, okay, get more familiar with this. Loading access token user. Loaded and accessed. Uh, you can also break through a wall instead of hacking a token. Oh, break through a wall. How do we break through a wall? That's true. I guess we're, I, mean, I did talk about walls being part of it. I guess we can break through a wall specifically by using our blowtorch, right? Like we can target it as well. Based on the stats, it's quite likely to increase trace. It does. Blowtorch increases trace by six. Uh, hammer increases by three. Oh, so we can target the wall. Okay, so tab, it goes between targets, but we can still move the target around uh, if we need to. All right, so like here, no, no. No, I can't do that. I don't see any cursor anyway. There is no keyboard targeting cursor anyway. Can I use the mouse target cursor? 78%. Huh, not sure how to use that actually. How do you target a wall? Um, okay, I'm gonna keep moving south here. Tab is keyboard target. Yeah, but it, can you target a wall that way? Oh, and I, by wall, you mean ice, right? I was thinking of regular wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you could target a wall that way. That's right. I was thinking of an actual wall wall, as in not an ice wall, a specific kind of. I, I guess I'm thinking of ice. I would think this more of as a door rather than a wall. Um, feel more like doors in terms of just placement behavior, just overall architecture, and even what they're responsible for guarding an entry to something rather than a wall. Uh, this is these are more walls, right? Kind of like a door probably makes more sense. All right, let's go. Yay, junk. All right, so I do kind of like the calm, it seems, when you're in a system before. I mean, time you don't get traced over time, I think. It's basically when you're doing things. Alarm state cleared. Node 5. Yeah, it's a door ice wall. It's just in... Oh, the terminology common in the source fiction. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's true. Uh, if you're going with the... Right... That kind of source material, it's true. It's considered a wall. It's actually been quite a number of years since I uh, steeped myself in that sort of thing, though. That's true. Uh, I used to uh, enjoy that as a kid, uh, Shadowrun, RPG, video games, stuff like that. Many years ago, and read a number of related books, but not quite as many books. So it seems, yeah, overall, I think we're it's relatively calm though, as, while you're exploring the system. Hmm, long system here. Okay, access denied that one, so we could try to force our way through that. But if that's true, I mean, I think. We can do whatever we want. We're free to. In which case, it's optimal to check all areas. Got our red token. Mm. That'll allow us to get through the north area, but might as well head back down here first. I actually want to make this sort of exploration phase a little less peaceful, but I didn't make it in the 70 year old. Ah, I have a local branch that introduces scanners that patrol around the system and try to trigger alarms. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You want pressure on the player, kind of, some kind of food clock, right? All right, access denied to this one. That's going to be the operator token, apparently. Um... So wait, if I unload the other user token, that, huh, I do kind of need extra memory. If I unload the user token, doesn't that, that means I just can't use it or, a oh, that's right, I think it drops, right? So if I, I can't activate the other token, if I do get rid of that one, user token invalidated. Okay, that actually invalidates it. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> Hey, Takeri. Want to say I like your work, Kazrati? Thank you. We are actually playing another work inspired by my work here. So, <laughs> uh, in in good company, 
Uh, developer Ilyx is also with us here in uh, chat. A Cogmine inspired hacking game, which is pretty cool. I like it. Obviously, lots of room for expansion too, and also we've barely even scratched the surface. I, I think in terms of uh, strategy and what we're doing, looks like Polybot, <laughs> well, or even just Cogmine. But yeah, um, another another seven DRL though. Uh, oh, finally, we found another system here. Uh, let's not hack it yet. Oh wait, actually, if we have an operator token, the this token, this operator, this operator level token, does that get us past? I guess we, that means we can go past lower level tokens anyway. We don't need the other token. It's just a question of level. Hmm. So I was afraid that it would like lose access to something, but no, it's just it's purely a hierarchy. So we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, so yeah, we do are currently in a kind of a safe phase, so we need to explore as much as possible. So kind of optimal to do that. Uh, optimal tedium that. Uh, I mean, it's interesting for us right now, so that's actually fine, but it's optimal tedium that um, you would want to get rid of in a full game. But while you're learning, it's not a huge deal. Like, I think work could have just disappeared into that right there and then headed out. So right now, we're just using our token to freely explore. And there's another machine. The financial database, which is, I think, the main target. Oh, no, wait, access denied. Ooh. I like how the workers are sometimes crashing on their own. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that, again, it's interesting. We can't actually see these machines when they're not in view. On the map memory, it doesn't keep machines. Uh, so we know there's a financial one here, and there was another one down here to the south southeast, which I guess we can't check out right now. Um, let me think here. So I guess... Yeah, we can't even really use our shield. I was gonna say, I guess we could take this and then head out. It's interesting though, yeah, that these, these doors, these ice walls are, the way to get out is also blocked by the very things that are going to try to stop you. Um, Cause anyway, I kinda wanna hack this and then head south and get back to the other area. <laughs> At least one of those workers is definitely running Win95. Workers literally just spawn, walk to their work site, and check if they should randomly crash each turn. They're just there to add some life. And they interact, uh, interestingly, with some of the special programs you get from dev centers. Yeah, I mean, they seem to be just kind of like background life. That's how I was interpreting them. All right, we'll just take this here. Wait a minute, what? That invalidated our token? Oh, right, okay. Triggering an alarm, that's right. It invalidates your token. Wow, wait, doesn't that mean we're kind of like stuck in here and we have to blow through all the walls, which will increase our trace? Huh, interesting. Tokens... Pretty valuable. Um, actually, wait a minute. Okay, there's the line. That's what I was waiting for. All right. One thing I still don't know, again, is how far away I can get from this stuff. We're coming with multiple tokens. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I can see the advantage of having multiple tokens now. Um, I guess we will uh, fry that guy. You are fried. And we're still waiting for that progress to complete. And we're also still loading Blowtorch again, which itself increases trace. But it, these guys, this guy's going to increase our trace anyway. So the Emporium, nice. We got the data. Here's some cash. Okay, we got 427 now. Um... That was, was it, I wonder if that counts as the fame. I guess it counts when you get back because we, we were supposed to come here for a financial database, get plus one fame for it. Uh, we're going to definitely have to get rid of heat before we leave here. I'm trying to wait for my, here it is. Wait for this to load again. Boom. Fry that guy too. Okay. But I can't get out of here until uh, I can open this, which I can't do anymore because I don't have a token. Wow, it's going to be hard to get anywhere now. Um, well, no, I mean, we can just fry it eventually, but let's see. Let's, um, well, that'll increase trace, though, using this method. Uh, boom. Okay. Trace up. Um, seems to incentivize prepping your way out. Yeah, case the server, then come up with a plan of attack. Yeah, um... Right, that's what we were talking about earlier. That's why I, I pretty much explored most of the map before initiating an attack on that. 
so that because I figured we'd come out of there and then head back uh, south uh, to this other area. But still, it's kind of annoying, I guess, that we can't. The map memory is not remembering any of the ice that are there, which would be really nice to be able to see on the map because there's a big difference on whether or not there's an ice there. Like this spot up here to the north of us, there's no ice there. But we don't know that by looking at our map memory. Some of these spots have ice, some don't. Some have machines we want to hack. I wonder why that didn't make it into the map memory. Uh, oh, that's right. Can we turn on the buckler and avoid some chase? Good point. Um, I mean, shield and defense against attempts to trace. Oh, actually, though, I'm guessing this mostly helps against tracers. But uh, I wonder if it also helps... Mm, in any other way. Mm. All right, let's see. I guess we can just run it anyway. It's not going to hurt. But, uh, oh, oh, uh, what I was thinking of, does it help prevent the trace from, for example, blowtorch use? All right, so this room to our west, I think there's nothing back there, right? Oh, we didn't see that one yet, did we? Oh, I didn't check this room yet. Oh, but it's probably going to... It's another one of those rooms with cores in it. It's not an actual room with a machine we want to hack. There's one other machine down here I do want to hack somewhere down here. All right, so we're going to blowtorch our way through this. But you know what? We're going to do it after I have the shield up. The buckler. All right. Let's uh, tab down to this guy. Take you down. All right. Yeah. I think that still did trace anyway. I'm going to have to go through this now, too. Oh, that didn't work. Just wait here. Oh, didn't take that long. Oh, got to get through another one. Oh, wait a minute. Whoops, there's guys down here. What? <laughs> okay. Then it is time to fry him as well. Oh, that's what I wanted, this thing right here. As soon as I can get this guy again, we're waiting for our program to load here. Boom. All right, got him. All right, once this program's loaded again, we're going to try to hack this thing here, which was what again? Uh, the syslog port. Oh, okay. That's the log, which will drop our heat back down. What I, I don't, I guess we got the database then. That's all we needed, right? And we got some money out of this. And wait a minute, our trace just went up. Why did that happen? Oh, there's another trace. There's another pup right next to me. Oh, shoot. Wrong button. Um, all right, let's just get this guy. Oh, shoot, that didn't work. Okay, fine, we'll do it again. Boom, that worked that time. Oh, let's just keep spitting these things out. All right, we're going to hack this here. Boom. Mm. log port, bring it. <clears throat> Getting faster at this after having figured out how it works. It looks like we've gotten most of the pups. 40%. Eighty percent, and no one tracking us right now. Pending logs erased. So notice that our heat up here just went from plus three to plus zero. So don't worry about that. What we haven't done yet is found a way to get rid of our permanent heat, um, which is important, I think. So having erased that, I think we can just disconnect. Uh, wait, how do we, wait? Do I have to go somewhere special to disconnect? Uh, I tried the key; it doesn't work on my keyboard. Disconnect. Disconnection initiated. Please wait. Huh. The key didn't work, actually. Hmm. The hotkey for disconnecting, I don't think it did anything. Maybe maybe it actually showed up. I don't think it showed up there. It showed up if I clicked. Anyway, the map memory is very tied to the map itself, which the doors and ports aren't technically a part of. Basically, another engine limitation I'd like to, have to, uh, I'd like to fix, but haven't had time to. Yeah, makes sense. You can see that. Okay, so we're back. Um, we did not get a plus to fame. Hmm, I wonder why. I mean, we technically, we did hack a financial database successfully and got out of there, and I didn't see any others? Hmm. Unknown. Okay. Uh, more things have appeared here. All right. Uh, you didn't hack or find the kernel. Oh. Oh, no, but I thought it was this one. I was going after this, rank one. I thought rank one in meant that, but does rank mean something else? I thought rank one was also fame. That's true, we didn't hack a kernel. I was looking at this here. Where was it down here? Uh, higher rank. Not for cash, of course, but just fame and higher rank. So do you have to get the kernel in order to get this rank? And what does rank mean? Is rank just your rank in the store? Because I don't see a rank anywhere in my interface here. 
do I have a, a store rank? You need to hank the colonel for fame rank? Hmm. Well, the fame, definitely. I mean, they knew about that from the help file, but what I don't get is, uh, do we have a store rank and that's separate from fame? Because there's no menu for that here. Rank does determine the fame granted by the colonel. Oh, okay. Rank determines the fame by the colonel. So that wasn't a proper assumption. Rank and fame go together. And it's the amount of fame you get from that terminal. All right. Got it. I was curious if this was mainly a separate thing because it's coming from the store. Is it a store rank or something like that? And you can get more stuff that way. So, okay. So, yeah, first assumption was correct, but we did need to actually use the kernel. But, um, oh, huh. I guess, oh, so I guess this information here, see, my assumption based on the bounty board was that our bounty is to go after a financial database. Um, which I guess that map had a financial database in it, but that wasn't the target. The target, you still have to go get the kernel. I wonder if that means you also have to get, you have to get both the kernel and the financial database in order to get the full benefit. Hmm. Anyway, not 100% clear on that. Um, and the system type determines what special port the system contains. Financial database give you cash, right? And so we got the cash part at least, but I didn't get the other one. I uh, didn't quite finish uh, looking around. Okay, so we got 427 to spend. Um, and I guess stealth was helping us out there, must have been. Uh, and we basically, yeah, we do have a hard limit on the number of systems we can connect to because of this heat here. We got a ton in the first map because I didn't know how to play yet. Um, which was bad, but only one for the other one. I should make all the system names different from their special port names. Currently, the only the development center has a different name where the special port is code repository. Hmm. Hmm. Development center, code repository. Yeah, you want con generally would probably want consistency in that regard, whether or not they're the same or the different. Because they yeah, are these are types of special systems, but a development center is actually code repository. They should be the same. This one might as well just be called code repository. So either either you want them all the same or all different, right? Um, okay, so there's a lot more programs here. Didn't actually lose these, which was nice. Could get start out with some tokens. Hmm, I can see some different uh, some different approaches here. Strategic approaches um, by like getting a lot of extra tokens, for example, in order to continue operating without having to fight as much stuff. But then you're weaker in other ways. Yep, that's true. Not having enough processing for everything, so we could technically um, increase our processing for 100. Seems like a good, I think you probably want at least three early on. Um, I haven't actually had to use these other things yet. They're a lot cheaper, too. Hmm. Could be valuable, uh, considering how cheap they are compared to other stuff later on. Hmm. Uh, all right, so let's see. Um, 327. Hmm. Overall, I like the, I think the, the, the progress, um, the rate of progress in the game does seem to be fairly well balanced. Hmm. Probably one of the, the main drawback is just the fact that you can safely explore everything in advance. It makes me want to actually go for tokens early on just as a way to get, uh, see stuff before, yeah, when there's no pressure on you and then plan for optimal, uh, attacks on systems. Could go straight to operator level. It's expensive though. So if you go with 250 though, that basically gives you full access to everything uh, right away, yeah? Hmm, I'm gonna start with that. And 550 buckler user, just to see how that plays out. 77, we do one more stealth, and then uh, go for 
just go for something basic. Honestly, though, I don't think we're not going to be able to win uh, unless we figure out how to drop permanent heat. So probably just rename the fame stat to rank so everything's consistent, still fits thematically in the UI. Um, maybe. I don't know. I mean, why why does this have to be rank? Couldn't this be fame as well? I mean, if this is the point is to give you fame, why are they saying why would why why did why, you I, I was curious why rank appeared. Fame also seems to make more sense thematically than rank. Um rank made it made it seem like it's more of this is associated with the organization itself uh, the shop here or whatever or some kind of organization that's where rank comes in fame is more nebulous and um, general than rank so i think you it'd make more sense to switch all this to fame or um it obviously it sounds it can sound kind of weird on a bounty board to call it fame but from a gameplay sense, it makes a lot more sense to do that. Um, but yeah, if rank doesn't mean anything in terms of like a, a rank in an organization. That's kind of weird. So anyway, uh, we're not going to make it to the end anyway. So probably just keep going with, uh, we'll go with something smaller. And we can immediately run this access token. Authorization token. And then we can also turn on our blowtorch and our buckler. And yeah, hammer is just gonna sit there and not do anything. And so again, L. What, what what L is for login port. So you always get you're starting your nice login port room. But I like how we don't have to mess with that now. Little side room here with these cores, which we don't have anything to do with. All right. But we now have free reign of the land because we spent money on it, and I made a little bit of money there. Makes sense. Uh, it seemed weird on a bounty board was what I was thinking. Yeah, I agree that it, uh, seeing the word fame on the bounty board is weird thematically. But rank has its own issues as well. Um, what you can do is kind of separate it out. Um, it, 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 when we get back to the page, I could show you what I mean. But don't, pref pref don't prefix it with the, the rank part. You would first put the target name. And then in parentheses, you could say fame X, like fame 1. So then it becomes more like a game mechanic because it's in parentheses after the main name of the thing that you're targeting and less of a, this is the shop telling you this is worth two fame, right? It becomes uh, separated from the rest of the things. It seems less weird thematically that way. If you prefix it, then it becomes more important. Um, I'm curious why you've only gone for financial databases. They are uh, different. I'm uh, just because that's what I found. I'm just hacking everything I find, um, and that's what I found so far. Oh, you mean on the on the, from the shop? What I'm targeting? Oh, I was targeting it purely based on fame, um, the level. I didn't want to go too high, but not too low. I wasn't really sure what I, I forgot what the others even do. What are they? Security nexus eliminates a portion of permanent. Oh, that's what we need to be going for. Shoot. I should have gone for this. See, I didn't remember what these did. That's why I was going for financial databases. <laughs> I should go for this right there. See, I had forgotten what this, what did this. I remembered from reading all this that something can get rid of permanent heat, but I looked over here for that information and I didn't want to reread everything to find it. Uh, I guess that's one advantage if you can actually uh, have the text file, like, you know, in a manual, then you could just search for the word um, or, on, or on a web page, you know, search for the word and then find all the references and more easily access a topic you're interested in. I wanted to know what I you could drop permanent heat with, and now I've learned it. It's the security nexus. If I'd known this, I would have targeted that uh, just now. So there's your answer. <laughs> so there was more financial database options, it's true, but there was a security nexus on there, uh, and I should have gone for it because our biggest problem right now is going to be permanent heat. Uh, right now it's... Uh, uh, six, because every time you go into a new map, it gets plus one. And so here we have the uh, slog port. It's marked with an H. So we know that's down here in the bottom right, or this southeast room, as far as the map is concerned. And we don't draw all these side rooms. Basically, I just want to free explore the whole thing. There's not going to be anything in these little side rooms. Wait a minute. Access denied. What? Oh, we need, we need some kind of admin token or whatever to get through this back room or we need to just blow it up what is this barrier hmm. oh that must be where like the kernel is or something i like how you can pick up this uh junk too feels really good to pick up junk like that 
Even if it's not worth a whole lot, it adds up and it's nice. <laughs> Mm, I see what you mean. I throw it through the three columns, like essentials on the left, decker mechanics, opposition targets. Yeah, I mean, the organization that's here works pretty well, but you can't, you just can't cover all cross sections for all topics. It's impossible to do, basically. So, and that's when searching comes in. But yeah, it's nice to know the security nexus one. That's what it was. That's what I was looking for earlier. So I totally uh, need to do that. And so here's a database, uh, the financial database. Basically just freely searching around. Honestly, at this point, one of the anti-tedium things that you could do if there was no pressure could have done is if you walk into a map and turn on your operator token, it just immediately reveals the whole map. Because <laughs> then you don't have to do this. Or the whole map that's accessible to you, the entire section. That would be just you know, kind of a, a QOL thing that's uh, less, makes it, you know, less interesting, I guess, um, exploration-wise. And, but... You know, a way to speed things up. If there's zero danger, which there is now. But I know you're intending to add some danger, which makes sense. Uh, there probably should be. But that, of course, factors into, you know, how you balance other things, too. Ooh, there's a token there on the ground. So wait, I need to keep that token on the ground. That's a regular old green token. There's no reason to take that right now because I have one active. And if I take this... Wait, if, if it's not active, doesn't it also... Is it active or not? If I take this, it, it won't get rid of that token, will it? And does it reset all tokens? I forget if it resets all tokens or not. Um, because if I just leave it on the ground, doesn't that mean I could come back and pick it up later if I needed to? Anyway, all right. We're mostly all right. There's one door over there that we haven't gotten through. And I'm pretty sure because that's the where the kernel is. Everything else we know. We know... Uh, I think if you just keep it in inventory, it won't get popped. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. As long as it's not active. Um, oh, Pass to the Future says, I feel like error access denied message to tell you what level of token you need. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Why didn't I think of that? The, p the place where that message is emitted already has all that relevant info already loaded. Oh yeah, why didn't? Yeah, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. I mean, we you can kind of guess... Um, once you learn the basic tokens, it's not too hard, but that would help you learn a lot faster and probably, yeah, just be helpful overall. Okay. So, uh, we need, um, all right. So we know where, what was it? We've got, this one was this, the port is here. We want to hit this last. So that's the last target and the financial database. Wait, where was that one? Shoot forgot where it was and i can't see it on the map i'm gonna remember where these are actually mm -hmm. oh this way it is okay financial database here so if we can hit this hit the syslog last and i think we got to get through the room to the north all right so the problem is wait a minute, if it's running so all right i don't i guess that's not a problem i should wait if the alarm goes off can i just turn off my operator token and make sure it's not oh but as soon oh wait i can't turn it off I have the other token, but I can't turn that off. Uh, you can't turn off tokens. You can only unload them permanently. So my the, my operator level token will be gone as soon as I take out this door, which is kind of what I want to do. Uh, most complaints so far are UI UX stuff. Most of that seems like 70-year-old artifacts. Yeah. You could blow doors ahead of time for your exit. I I think blowing doors ahead of time, doesn't that, doesn't that cause an alarm? Because what I want to do is blow this door. Which is going to, I assume that's going to set off the alarm. Um, normally, I've been hacking things to do that. You don't get alarm unless you fail? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I mean, my intent is to blow this door anyway. So we might as well blow this one first. And then we'll still have a token that we might be able to use to get through other doors down here. So we need to hit that. And then the other one last, we're going through this door. Trying to get to the kernel, which is probably back here. I think this is the only door that we can't get through. Um, so let's attack this door um blowtorch on the door 64 percent, and it's gone 
Yeah, okay. All right, that just invalidated our token. So we now pretty much answered all those questions. The, the operator token wasn't invalidated as soon as we do that because um, it did trigger an alarm. And we have one more token left, though, because it was in our inventory, and it's okay. And there it is, a kernel. So to get to the kernel, yeah, it's basically a deeper in, harder door. Uh, I like it. Makes sense. And here comes the doorman. <laughs> Trying to disconnect us. Oh, man. Um... All right, let me think here. Access token user. Damn, didn't take him out. Uh, wait a minute, I can keep trying that here. It's still loaded. Invoke blowtorch on the guard. Got him. Intrusion. All right, protocol initiated. We just I don't know how far away I can step from this thing. Yeah, at least he didn't kick me out. Doorman kind of did scary, I guess. Uh, given programs have cooldown, is that why you'd want multiples? Um, possibly. The thing is that blowtorch, I immediately was able to use it. Anyway, uh, let's fry this guy too. I, I, I'd like to learn how far away I can step from machines. But yeah, for some programs, I can see you definitely would want something like that. I don't know how far away I can get from this. And maybe closer makes your intrusion go progress increase faster. I'm not actually sure. I'm just going to stay right here where I can actually see a little bit more. I'm just waiting slowly. Oh, there comes a guy. Oh, yeah. Here comes a guy. Um, let's see. We're at 81%. Friggin'. Initiated force disconnection attempt. Man, stop scaring me, man. Wait a minute. He inserted a hostile subroutine. What do you do? Disconnect. It's 57%. We just die. Come on. Wow. Okay, that was a lot of attempts. Wait a minute. Did he stop me? No, no. I got it. Upgraded your rank. Oh, damn it. Yes. Our famous one. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Here comes a tracer guy. Oh, he's moving fast. He's moving faster than us. Damn. I can't actually get through this door. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How'd this door come back? <laughs> Did not notice this door came back. And now our program is loading slowly, slower than it was a second ago. Why is that? Hmm. A second ago, I was able to... Maybe it's because it wasn't successful? There it is. It's loaded. Failed. Oh, yeah. It's only when it's successful. You die. There you go. If it's No, wait. It was successful there, and it worked. I, I don't really get when the program is deciding not to or uh, to do that. Weird. Uh Try to indicate it visually. You can go away until the tether is 100% red. Oh, okay. It does a gradient from green through yellow to red. Okay. I was just kind of afraid it, if it wasn't, didn't have that kind of QOL and it's suddenly just going to cut off if I get too far away. So that's something definitely to experiment with normally that to find the real answer to that. I can see that being important. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go west. Technically, I might be able to use a user token to get through here, but I think, wait a minute. I, I think I'll just probably just take this out. It's gonna I'll trigger an alarm, but oh uh, shoot. Okay, yeah, that's annoying. Take that guy out. I'm not quite sure when how does a blowtorch decide whether it's exhausted or not? I can't figure that out yet. It's not consistent. Or at least I haven't noticed how whether or not it's consistent. Sometimes I have to reload blowtorch. Uh is there some other info on here that'll tell me about this? Strength two. Hmm. Unknown. Hmm. Not sure. Sometimes I can use it like three times, four times in a row before I have to reload, and then sometimes I have to do it immediately. Like right then, I just took down an ice wall and I can use it immediately. Crash chance? The crash chance for the program? Oh, is that what that is? 15% crash chance. Likely this program will crash when used. Oh, so it's crashing. 
Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Yeah, I guess that. All right. No, so wonder, no wonder it wasn't consistent. It's a percent chance. It was a lot more consistent with the hammer because that's a friggin' 50% crash, crash chance. <laughs> oh, crashing. That's what it was. Crashing it to reload. Yeah, sorry. Ah, should have realized that. We did read about that before, too. And also, if we read the log closely, you can probably uh, would, would have uh, caught on to that. The log is fairly important in this game, especially, I guess, when you're learning. You pay a little closer attention to it. I already was paying more attention to it because it is pretty important. But um, It's interesting also seeing the money values associated with these different ice walls. What uh, I wonder what those mean. Is that related at all to difficulty or any other kinds of I don't know what it's related to. All right, 78%, no. No crash. Okay, it didn't crash that time. Good, it's going down here. Oh, whoa, Mr. Whoa, what? Oh, shoot, there's a doorman over there. All right, I'm gonna start hacking this database immediately. And then, this is Trace guy, gonna do it, never mind. I hope it doesn't crash, just take this guy out. There we go, oh, okay, it didn't crash, good. Take this guy out. Oh, 22%, wow, how's that guy so good? All right, I'm gonna stay here. We can go fairly far away, it looks like. I'm going to take down this wall. It's not going to make them happy, that's for sure. Wait, is there a way I can go get there faster? I don't know, I don't know if I should go east or south. There's, which way has fewer ice walls that are active? I don't actually know the answer to that question. All right. Um, I'm going to try to take this out then. We're at 41%. 100% red, huh? Wow, I can do this from all the way over here. Nice. Um, that's where the log is compared to most like massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also a massive log window is thematically on point for a hacking game. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's important and I like how the log is. Uh, the overall, I think the UI composition uh, layout is quite good. Very helpful. So wait, if we're in this next room, we shouldn't really get have enemies on us. Whoa, what happened? Did that fail? Huh. That, I thought you said when it was completely red. <laughs> that went out before it was completely red. Is it because I went into the next room? That might be it, huh? Like if we're in, a, in, if we're in a, an inter room here, it's fine. But you have to be at least in the same room. Yeah. All right. So we're starting from scratch here. Oh, check that out. Wait, can I still hack? Yes. An ice just rematerialized here. An ice wall right there. And I'm on the other side of it, but I can hack from outside. Perfect. Yes, we got the data. Here's some cash. Financial database access. Okay. All right, so now we have the syslog, which is down here. And we're done after the syslog. Alarm state cleared. Well, guess what? Here comes another alarm state. Well, technically, like, I might be able to use the user token, but I don't know if this is a user token um, door. So whatever. I'm just going to like try to take it out instead crashed blowtorch crashed whoa what oh man there's a bouncer on the other side of the wall who's attacking me no way i can't see him <laughs> are they allowed to do that oh that's right you know what he can see through the wall so he is allowed to do that if i had a token i might be able to see through the wall or even pass through it uh you know what i'm gonna start loading my token oh shoot never mind he's gonna come right through the wall anyway <laughs> Oh, shoot, there's two of them? Oh, God. All right, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to blow towards this guy. Didn't work. I'm going to pull back again. Is he going to come in here even? Can he even get through here? Yeah, okay, here he comes. Die. Hell yeah. All right. Wait a minute, what? Where'd that ice wall go? I didn't take that ice wall out, right? Uh, the ice barrier just exited due to a segmentation fault. Oh, I oh did I just attack that accidentally? No. Oh, wait a minute, what? Whoops. Okay, my bad. All right, here we go. Last hack. I'm gonna hide back here. I'm kind of I guess I can stay anywhere back here. I like those colors, that's nice. Okay, so anywhere in the room. It was because I left the room that I allowed dropped the connection earlier. Pending logs erased. Hell yeah. Okay. Download failed. Yeah, I wasn't trying to download. I'm actually trying to use the other key. This, uh, 
this key doesn't actually work for me. Um, but at least there's a button for it over here. So that works. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Uh, it doesn't work for me, though. Please wait. Okay, disconnect again. Wait, canceled? Oh, have to, oh that's right. It takes time. Okay, I got to wait a few turns here. I can't see the passage of time, so I disconnected. Connecting to the Emporium. Cool. We're back, and uh, yeah, so we didn't gain any heat from that. That's good. We need to check. Next, we have to go after Security Nexus. Ooh, three or two. So the I, I'm assuming that a three is going to be harder than two. We did get our one fame there, and um, yeah, so it's probably safer to go after a two. Um, the three would be harder, but better rewards, but I'm not exactly powerful at the moment, so it might be safer to do this. The thing is, a Security Nexus of two at best, assuming full clear it, would only give us a minus one heat, which is not great because, uh, yeah, you get one for just for entering uh, the system. So that's not great. I really like the Adiva minus two. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if we can actually take it, but at least here there'll be a chance, a better chance. I don't want to connect yet, though. We've got to spend our money here. We got 396 dynamite. Ooh. Dynamite. Dynamite does what now? Wait, couldn't I, couldn't I right click to get info on this? Oh, there it is. Wait, it's not working every time. Huh. <laughs> we must have been SSL tunneling through the door earlier. That's certainly worth some fame. <laughs> Dynamite has a really long load time, but it and a higher trace cost, even higher, but an alarm 100%. Oh, yeah, but I'm taking alarm chance. Alarm chance of a blowtorch is what? Alarm chance is 80. It's pretty high. Crash of 15, but dynamite. Dang. Dynamite is strength of 9. Definitely trace cost always crashes. Oh, okay. So dynamite is when you really, really have to take someone out for a little extra trace cost, and they're definitely going down. Huh. And it's definitely going to crash. So you can only use it every 400. Uh, I, I like it, though. It seems kind of neat. It costs 160. A little expensive. I haven't really encountered a, really the serious threats, though, which are going to start like putting more pressure on our other systems, I believe. And I did like the... It's like I really like starting with that other token. It was uh, pretty powerful to be able to map the entire thing out. Kind of expensive. That costs 250 which, you know, lowers your overall effectiveness. Um, let's see. Shoot. I can't even afford dynamite and an operator level token. That's unfortunate. Um, hmm. Dynamite blowtorch. Blowtorch has been very effective, though. Imagine if we lost that or something. would be in big trouble. Maybe you should really, instead of going to dynamite, just go for a second, a spare blowtorch. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, I was looking at the other thing. This load time is only uh, 150, so it's literally two and a half times the load time. You can only use it, I guess, one target effectively. But, oh wait, that's right. If you have multiple loaded at the same time, you can attack multiple targets much faster, even if some are crashing. So you can get fairly powerful. Um, man, I could see this could get into some pretty interesting fights. Hmm. Neat. Uh, yeah, mainly a question here of limited cash we want to spend that money on. Also, if we go after a security nexus, that means we don't get a financial database, which is where really a lot of our cash is coming from. It's going after financial databases. Hmm. Anyway, the biggest problem was the very first map where I got a lot of heat um, just when I was learning. Otherwise, we'd be in a much better situation. For example, just keep going after, like going after this financial data database might be a better target. Um, just to get the the free extra rank and actually have a chance of winning, whereas I think we're my, we're kind of beyond that now probably, um, because there is a a curve in this game that if once you get behind it, uh, it can be really hard to catch up. I can see, but again, it was mainly a learning thing. Mm. Login could try the slower approach without going in with a token. Processing. 
add another blowtorch. Or could at least start with just a user token. I guess that's probably worth it for 70. And see, explore a number of rooms first instead of immediately uh, getting attacked. It's just this one allows you almost get everywhere except the kernel, it would seem. Uh, there's three general categories of breakers. There's reliable ones, which have moderate, a moderately high trace and really low crash chance. There's stealth ones with moderate crash chance and very low trace cost. Uh -hmm. There's bombs, very high trace cr cost, crash chance, and alarm chance, but very high string. Yeah, makes sense. Basically, you know, you when you've got a game with X number of stats or variables, you know, you have, you want to have, try to dev develop or design um items or you know enemies or whatever that take uh, advantage of the different any kind of different uh, patterns you can create with those so the more variables you have the more interesting stuff you can come up with but it doesn't always have need to really need to be that many you can do a lot with just a few variables for certainly for a 70 rl it's plenty so yeah that's our, our dynamite here um which is interesting um i like the idea but I think I'm going to go for, let's go for a regular user token this time, just to kind of switch things up. And that would give us enough extra space for dynamite as well. Let's see if that's 160 or 230. Shoot, that means we couldn't add another processor. Hmm. Also, technically, yeah, we can go down and some, like drop our stealth a little bit just to give us uh, what we would need to also get another processor instead. Last time we ended, I actually have some extra trace left. Of course, we haven't gone after a two before, and I think our next target is going to be this one. I'm going to get that just for the hell of it. <laughs> Might as well play with new toys. And that leaves us with 71. All right, now what was redundancy and hardening? Those are the, uh, stuff we kind of need, I think, more later against others. Uh, it, was, it was located up here. Uh, restore corrupted programs. Corrupted. Huh. Haven't had enemies that are corrupting our programs yet. Sounds like it could be pretty useful. And hardening repair damage stats. Haven't met with that stuff. Also black ice and stuff like that. Since we have some money, I'll just take some of these in case we want to use something like that. And then we're going to drop in and go after this new incorporated security nexus. All right. Starting in the initial room here. Haven't seen burners, viruses, killers because you've been staying on lower floors. Ah, yeah, okay. That's what I figured it would be. We're going to need... Uh... Okay. Actually, wait a minute. No, no. I was thinking of hacking this. If you use a regular token and hack this, I wanna, I'm wondering is where did the operator tokens come from? I didn't have a clear idea of that. I know we can get a login port to get a user token, I guess. But if you have a user token active and you go after a uh, login port, does that upgrade your token to operator level? Is that how that works? Is that how you get to an operator level? I hadn't quite noticed how that works. But yeah, that's true. If we have a higher level, I can understand we're going to start facing the, the harder types of enemies that we haven't seen on our list here. We've only seen uh, these two basic ones. There's also these guys. Damage your cyber deck and corrupt your software. Okay, so the viruses are the ones that we want to be able to fight with that. And uh, burners. All right, we'll see. So yeah, going after higher stuff now. Slightly higher. But yeah, so what I was thinking is, is, the, is that how you upgrade your token? I didn't quite even pay attention earlier to how I was getting them because I was just activating them whenever as opposed to buying one. Uh, and so, data ward, data ward. And over here we have a bulwark. So we know this here is a higher level one. And a barrier. And a code gate wasn't, I don't recall. Anyway, you can also see just by activating this. All right, we're starting to activate some of these. Let's turn on our blowtorch. Turn on, we can turn on, and we've got uh, three processors. So we can run that, run that, and also run our user token. <laughs> my main takeaway from watching people play my game is that UI is hard and roguelikes are hard to explain. <laughs> 
Uh, you, yeah, I mean, doing good UI is uh, pretty challenging. I mean, the main thing is also this is 70 RL, right? And uh, so you don't have time to really do uh, new player onboarding or a really good job of that if you have, you know, the amount of depth, like, for example, this game has. Uh, you can do it if you have really simple mechanics, and which a lot of Rogue 70 girls do have. And you can just put all the instructions in just a few lines on your itch page and everybody gets what's going on. There's not much to explain. But in a game like this, ideally, once you've got the full version out, you've got a you've got context, contextual help and tutorials going on, right? And telling you how to interact with things when you see them for the first time. Um, that'll, that goes a long way towards teaching people without having to try to remember what they read and all the instructions and also reference back to that. Um, that and also, of course, yeah, the, the other things like just the U, um, uh, the UX parts and having little tips and just better designed UI so that it, people it's more intuitive, right? Overall, I think this is actually a pretty good UI and haven't had my, as much trouble with it. But to be honest, also that's because I'm coming from Cogmind where I didn't, you know, half this stuff I didn't have to really think too much about because it's pretty similar. Um, whereas I bet, you know, I guess you might have seen some other people play it who are not. Gogmine players and probably, you know, they had they were starting from even a more blank slate and had even more trouble in that regard. So right now I'm waiting for my user token here. There we go. We can now look through. Okay, the wait, but that's not higher level. Okay. We can check through all these doors now. Okay. So yay for user token. Which we can use to find out that this whole side over here. Nope, there's something over here. Workers getting in my way. Alright, we can access this too. Free stuff, my favorite. Okay, so we made 54, which is, it seems like every map you get at least one room like that or two, and uh, you don't make a ton from it, though. So without a financial database, I think we'll be, well, no, you hack other things. I think they give you some cash rewards for hacking other stuff, too. It's just not quite, it's going to be quite as much. I'm not as familiar with it, but. Okay, found another door up there. Eh, eh, God, having to mentally mark that that's theirs. Well, trouble, problematic. Also, I guess we don't know which kind of exit that is. Is that a... Yeah. It would be nice if we did know. Um, I don't know if the kernel is out there or not. Access denied. Yeah. I mean, we don't know if it could be the, a way to the kernel. Or just another area but it could be the kernel we'll see oh here's a second room Ooh, check it out this is a regular uh user token there ah operating token nice token room okay so up here we have token room and to our east we have one door we haven't gotten through but for now i gotta leave it out there uh. I need a better way than development centers to distribute the unique programs. I'd recommend at least try hacking a development center. They're the most interesting system at the moment. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Well, as long as we survive this map, we will definitely do that then. As long as that appears on the list, um, we'll go check that out. Because, yeah, we're on, oh, wow, we've got three rooms here. And, whoa, okay. Uh, there's more rewards on this map. I guess more rewards be specifically because there's also more potential threats. And more danger here. This one, we already got two operator tokens and two user tokens on the ground. That we can use as resources. Um, it sounds interesting, though. Getting into a development center to find unique programs. Alright, here's another door. Don't know. This particular room it could be kernel as well. And okay, so we're back to the main area. Unless the kernel can, it, it might not be the kernel purely because it's, I'm assuming the kernel's further away from the actual entrance. And so this room, this this kernel, or this uh, room to the south, there it is, yeah. Okay, so there's four different exits to that room. That seems like a dangerous room because of all the ice walls. Maybe that is the kernel. So there's one there. And one here. And that's it. Those are the only unexplored areas. Oh, no, wait. Well, nope, there's a room here. This is just one of those side rooms, though. Wow, we haven't found any of this. All right, so there's a security. One of them will be a security system. Oh, no, wait, there's also going to be... All right, my assumption is 
I bet that the one to the south is not the kernel then. Although, eh, probably a bit premature to be guessing how the map gen works. But yeah, we know there's an important machine in that room. And uh, it's either the kernel or the security nexus, but... Or the, I guess it could be the logs either. So there's three different things that we're looking for. Mm. Could just blow this door. Actually, wait, there's two, two tokens. So maybe, maybe we use one of them here. I'm going to have to unload one to use that, but I guess I don't even need the user token anymore. I mean, I, you don't, you only need the highest level of token that you have. So I can't run that. Um, as far as guessing how map gen works is graph based approach since your intu intuition that it's probably not the kernel is correct. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I think the kernel, that, that's exactly what I was guessing. That's cool to know that it's graph based. Yeah, and it makes the most sense for design. I'm, it's interesting and, and good that you're able to, I guess, implement that for this. Um, so graph based design. Yeah, the assumption is the kernel would be the one that's uh, furthest out and hardest to access. Um, whereas this here would likely be either the, it would be one of the other ones, one of the other two, probably the logs, but not necessarily. It's either the logs or the security is in this room. Uh, okay, so we can probably, we can just unload this uh, user token and switch. Oh, wait, uh, because operator should still get us through everything. We're going to hack this and get it messed up anyway in here. There we go. All right, that's the answer. Here's the back room with their cores and stuff. And uh, so this here, H is the syslog port. All right, so it is the logs. Um, all right, so yeah, we're gonna have to go out to the security nexus and the, the uh, um, kernel will be on the other side. Mm, up to seven heat now. All right, uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, so I guess it makes sense to use our current. To, 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 we're going to come here last anyway. And uh, we're going to go back to the other one because we can pass through it now anyway. I need to check. Because the map doesn't remember these things, I kind of have to re refresh my memory on how many doors there are. One new. It's cheaper to head west and grab the other token to get the log later, probably. First, though, we got to come up this way. All right, found the security terminal right there. Security Nexus. Okay, and then... All right, there it is. All right, we found the kernel. It's on just to the west of this room, and that's it. Okay, kernel is west. Security, yeah. So, just a question of what order to do everything in. It's going to be a little more complex here. What is What are these called? Enigma. Uh, different ice names here. Enigma. Definitely going to have to face some other kinds of enemies. And we have Dynamite and Blowtorch. Let's see. Security Nexus. So we're going to have a little more trouble getting out of here. So we're probably going to go after the Colonel. I assume uh, first is the best idea and backtrack and get this and then go out. Is there an ice up there? There is an ice up there. Don't lose it until we hack, though. Uh, it's not going to help, though. I was thinking you could hack that. Let me see. What if I grab that? Oh, that loses that. I'm trying to think of the ideal order here to play these in, but um, not quite sure yet. Based on what we have, because it's not incredibly uh, great, we could just drop the operator token right now and blast this wall down. And uh, basically doing that in order to turn on another attack ability. So we can just get rid of, unload our, our, our token, dynamite. And uh, we're going to have to wait for that to load, which will take a while. And they're going to use the blowtorch. Two blowtorches might also be good. Wow, 12% only on this. All right, let's check actually what dynamite does to this. 57% dynamite. 
and it still might not. That's that's these are pretty nasty. Anyway, we're gonna go with uh, lower chance. Wow, twelve percent. Yes, we're gonna get locked in this room now. <laughs> Where are you? Damn it! <laughs> oh shoot! No, that's the back door. Okay, we're good with that. Uh, I'm just gonna ignore this trace guy. Yeah, ignore you. Start hacking. Go. Should be able to get out of here. And back safely on the other side of this wall in case the ice reappears, which it eventually does. And then um, start whacking these guys. Oh, shoot. That didn't work. All right. Well, it didn't crash anyway. 2257. Wait, these guys are different. I need to look at these guys. Why are you different? This is a matrix analyzer. All right. So matrix analyzer is a higher level of uh, tracer here. Yeah, so it's harder to take them down. Huh. Let's, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I want to dynamite that guy. Uh, I don't see anything else more dangerous just yet. So let's just dynamite Mr. Matrix Analyzer. Hopefully takes him out. It's 71, so not guaranteed. He didn't die. Okay, that's not good. Wow. All right, I got him with another blowtorch. Then I'm going to get his friend too, hopefully. Wow. Might as well just let this guy trace me. It finally crashed. <laughs> I just hit him like a ton of times. He didn't go down. All right. Trace attempt diverted by the buckler. Yay, buckler. Incoming trace attempt. All right. Trace attempt diverted. Yeah, because you can see in the log there our uh, shield doing its thing. I'm waiting for our blowtorch to come back online. This weak little guy. At least it got the other one. One hit point systems do increase variance a bit. Yeah. For sure. It's okay, though. Oh, here we go. Blowtorch is back online. Whoops. There we go. Oh, there's the ice. It's back. The ice is back, but we're on the other side. I like that trick. I'm glad I found that on accident. <laughs> Don't hang out in the room. Hang out in the room. Uh, hang out in the ante room, right? Okay. Nice job. Updated your rank. Uh huh. Colonel done. Colonel port accessed. Okay, now we have to get out of here. We're still waiting on the dynamite, too. This dynamite's taking a while. I mean, I know it takes a while, but I guess eh, it takes two and a half times. Blowtorch has already come back online twice now, so the dynamite should be coming back soon. Wow, 12% to get out of here. Oh my. All right, uh, hit that door. Alarm triggered, wonderful. Dynamite's ready. Mm, I kind of want to save it instead of using it now, but this is only 12%. Dynamite is 57. I right, dynamite didn't work. Great, I tried both, they both failed. Great. Okay, now we got more guys coming after us. Uh, um, guess I'll have to go after this guy. Failed. Failed again. Failed again. Failed again. Hasn't crashed yet, though. Failed again. Five failures. Six failures. Seven failures. Oh, shoot. I'm going to get traced. Eight failures. Nine failures. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, no, it doesn't show nine over there. Maybe I was pressing it on as many. It's only, only six failures. Oh, no, wait. Never mind. No, it's... Oh, this is a Matrix Analyzer guy. Yeah, no wonder. But anyway. Um, shoot. Ah, uh, well. I should have saved the dynamite. That would have made more sense. Um... But yeah. You can see here... Um, yeah, I, I didn't realize it was a matrix analyze. I guess I should have not for, noticed from the percent. And using the dynamite was a bad idea. Yeah, we're going to lose. Uh, we're going to lose now. Unless... Well, there's... Either I can... No, no, disconnecting takes time anyway. So, yeah. The only way to win, actually, is to hit this guy's 22% right now. Failed. Yeah. Trace complete. Dead. As soon as we leave the level, we're dead. Ding! That's unfortunate. Crashed. In an early morning raid, you are taken into custody by corporate security forces. You find yourself locked in a tiny room awaiting an unknown future. No! Anyway, I mean, it's a learning run. It's a, you know, the whole thing was learning too. Um, so, 
I definitely could have played that better, but didn't ha haven't had any experience with uh, some of the later stuff. And it's complex enough that, yeah, this game could take a few runs to really get into, but I like it. It's, uh, it's a cool game. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to want to go back and beat this. Um, don't really have time for another full uh, run here. Uh, can we quickly finish the first area and then also get straight to a development center, though, maybe, to see what's there? It might be kind of hard to get very far. I do would like to actually play a little more, though. I mean, it's a cool... Wait a minute, I can't... Shift. Uh... Now we know more good run, very cool game. Yeah, uh, run run was actually not too bad. Um, learn, started learning a little too late uh, to optimize what was going on, but uh, or learning enough of the details. Oh, I think the, the help actually does cover it pretty well. Without that, man, you'd be so lost in, <laughs> in this game, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty nice job. I can't actually control anything, though. It's not a question, a question of the shift key anymore. I can personally verify it is beatable. I've beaten it. Yeah, I mean, I can see how this has definitely got to be beatable. And I'm, I'm really interested in strategizing this, actually. It's, it's cool. Um, I, I'd like to figure out some strategy. What I'm trying to figure out now is why I can't click on anything at all in the window. After pressing enter, I'm not able to do anything in the game. This I, I think I read this was one of the features that you added after the 7 DRL is a way to press restart the game or whatever. Unless that was another game and I'm getting them mixed up, but maybe it doesn't work all the time. I'm not able to interact with the game right now. Hmm, I see. WSM build has weird input issues that haven't fully root caused. Ah, see, so this would be only the online version because there is also the downloadable as well. I didn't play that one purely just because... Yeah, I've been uh, most games are uh, in the browser, so I've been doing them in the browser if they're available that way, just so I don't have to keep switching back to an, um, a non browser version. Plus, sometimes those are harder to stream the non browser versions. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, apparently that's not working. Uh, I guess I could technically restart the page. It's going to let me reload the page. Never mind. It, it's got control of the keyboard, though, it won't let me reload the page. Not by keyboard anyway, but nothing beats the mouse. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I was trying to control F5 to refresh, but or even F5, it hit locked my keyboard. So anyway, I just pressed the link again, and we're back. <laughs> All right. So zero, but yeah, I'd like to to, to play around with it some more. Um, this is definitely worth streaming some more. I mean. It, Shoot, I could even wait until next time and start it out. But I have, I think I'm only going to do one more 70 RL stream. I've got only, I've got a few games left on my list. That's it. And they might be slightly shorter games, I'm not sure. But uh, just three or four other 70 RLs. And I think that might be the last uh, 70 RL stream. Probably. I had a longer list, but I really got to get doing other stuff. So doing all the 70 RL streaming does take a bunch of time. And, uh, the way that I do it anyway. <laughs> and I had, I had probably another 10 games I was interested in playing that or streaming as well, not just playing. Because uh, there's other games I've been streaming that I haven't been playing, uh, 70 Euro Lies. So, yeah, we have the hammer. Oh, God, the hammer. <laughs> I do not like hammer. All right. Um, oh, that's right. We're still hacking this thing. Bring it. Okay. Oh, whoa. Hello there. Force disconnection attempt. Yes, yes. We have twenty percent only, right? And then there's the hammer going here. Uh, hammer. Oh shoot! I forgot to load it. God damn it! <laughs> Just starting out here. I am new player. Go away. Okay, there we go. Access token allocated. All right. So now we can uh, pick up access token, and. Uh, Get rid of Mr. Doorman here. Whoops, I keep pressing the wrong button for that. Okay. Oh god, the hammer indeed. It's intentionally pretty terrible. Yeah, this is the first thing I want to do is get away from this hammer. It's uh it's it's at least something to do though. You can need something, right? Alright, here we go. Now we have access and we can roam the halls. Roam the network. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Found the, found the nice stuff. 
Oh man. Hmm. Oh wait, you know what? I forgot. So we can actually carry these around. I couldn't couldn't have taken those earlier. I think that was an oversight on my part. I can still take these and just not use them and they're fine as long as I don't activate them. So you should always be picking those up as long as you've got enough slots. That was... In fact, wouldn't that have saved me that time? I could have technically turned one of those on and run through the ice doors. Uh, I think I misplayed that. Can't I just... I can just take these things and be using them later. So, uh, we do start with one heat and plus one. One heat for our first system pre-shop. Okay, found one of the inaccessible areas. One of the inevitable inaccessible areas. So yeah, gotta certainly have a, a clear idea of the map gen after having played several here. Another one probably here to the north, yes. And in this area here, so I think we've got everything. The only two places I need to go are, yeah, those two directions. And I'm not sure which is which. One of them is probably accessible using our operator token. Oh, processing capability. Right, right. All right, we'll just unload that token and uh, load up that token. And uh, there it is. Okay, white floors, I know what that means. It means special room. And what is the first one that you get to? It's a, oh, that's the log port, right, the H. The white is the log. And then through here, back room, and here we go. Financial database is, I guess financial database, you always start uh, in a financial database for your uh, first mission to give you kind of an injection of some funds. And then the room to the east here is probably the kernel. Yep, which we can't get into yet. All right, so yeah, you want to hit the basically the order as usual. You want to try to hit the kernel, then special, and then the other one. Or it, really either one, just system log definitely lasts. So, But based on the order of the things here, there's an ice there. Let's see, op This one is, uh, we can't only get through an operator token, though, which we only have one of. All right, we have to get through that with a hammer then. Okay. So, now that we know how to play it, though, much easier. Yep, we're going to hammer our way through that eventually. <clears throat> so, eventually, that syslog ends up being close to the spawn most of the time. is actually just the only important room that doesn't consider distance from the spawn point. It's only trying to be sort of close to the map center. Oh, interesting. Uh, I was wondering how you... We're pointing that. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess, where it is. Well, towards the center does sound kind of good, you know, balance-wise. Um, don't want to get too many chaotic forced routes going. All right, we're in the kernel room. And there's a doorman headed our way. And we want to probably head in here and try to find the kernel. There. Boom. Go for it, because we're already getting attacked anyway. Need to get out of view of that doorman. Twelve percent. What I don't know is how easy it is for him to kick us out. I mean, technically, he can try to kick us out. Uh, yeah. I. How does that happen? Wait a minute. So to get out of this room, which token is that? Can I use a regular token on that door? Maybe? Or is it all doors back here? He has to maintain it lowest for specific number of turns. Ah, okay. That's something that I guess I wish I knew um, details on exactly how many turns, etc. And that's basically how I've been trying to stay out of their LOS, essentially. But if you have to attack... But yeah, that that's important knowledge. If they, it'd be, I guess it'd be nice if they had a countdown. Then maybe they do inserted hostile subroutine initiated forced connection attempt... Um, all right, we're going to do this. 
Because if there was a kind of countdown, it allows me to know I can attack this guy and then break LOS. Uh, no, it lets me know how many times there are. I can do that. Trying to take this guy out. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Man, bad tracing going on here. Well, at least those guys are easy to take out, even with a hammer. Got him, finally. Here comes another one. Oh, shoot, it crashed. Oh, he can't leave that room though, can he? Oh no. <laughs> oh shoot, there's two of them. <laughs> mm, I want this database. Okay, that guy's easier. It's the 12%. I'm not actually checking their name. When I'm targeting them, I I can't see their name anywhere. I guess it'd be kind of nice if I had that info. Be a little easier to tell the differences. Oh yeah, now I can attack this thing while we're at it. While we're fooling around here, twelve percent. Hey, hmm. Let's see. Noted, it'd be kind of nice to know names. Oh yeah, show names and targeting UI. Yeah, some some putting that somewhere is pretty useful. I mean, and then you have to use the mouse. I mean, I'm, I'm sure also a number of people are using the mouse. But, you know, just for pure keyboard players, that's the thing, when you make a game that's both keyboard and mouse accessible, you've got to think about both uh, groups of players and uh, allowing everything to be accessible to both. Oh wait, so we got the info already, right? I got the, yeah, here's some cash. Okay, we got already got paid. I can leave if I want to. Let's get out of here. Oh, shoot, he's right here. Okay, never mind, he's dead. <laughs> oh, shoot, I can't get through that door? Oh, that's the one I couldn't get through earlier. Oh, never mind. Wait, there's a friggin' doorman back there now? Anyway, I put on another token here. The intent being to get through the... Shoot, doorman. How can... Oh, no, you can see me from over there. Two of them. Oh, come on. Oh, shoot. I'm going to get traced. Wait, what am I going to... Oh, man. I'm going to... Crap. <laughs> I'm not going to get back to the log. And, and it's probably not going to matter anyway, because I don't think we're going to be able to... We're not going to finish a full run anyway. So I guess it didn't matter. Wait. Oh, is the trace also kind of... How much is this... I mean, the hammer itself. What trace is... Well, shoot. What? I tried to shift A. It moved me instead. Whoops. I must not have had shift down enough anyway traces cost us three for this so yeah all these hammers man repeatedly hammering is bad for the trace here i can't get out though without going through this door which means i'm gonna get traced i'm gonna trace myself all because of that yeah remote system connection abort that's unfortunate oh well yep we're out okay uh development center boom we're going for you Tower shield. Ooh, better than a buckler. <laughs> Dynamite. We've only got 366 to play with here, and I failed to get rid of that. But the heat probably only matters, yeah, for a longer game, which this won't be. So, tower shield exploit seven defense against attacks in your server and trace. Yeah, nice. Load time is even longer. Huh. Seems pretty cool though. Alpha. I like the tower shield. Dynamite. Wow, a lot more stuff than we started with last time. Or a lot more options, bigger stuff was, I wonder why that is. All right, so anyway, we're gonna try and check this out and get our butts kicked here. 366, though, we're gonna um, go for, whoops. I guess part of it is you have too low of stealth there. Um, too low of stealth. Stealth's incredibly important here. Shoot, I'm not gonna have enough. I'm gonna have to get at least a blowtorch. Um, man. It'd be really nice, I guess, to have some other token. Could go for a user token to start with. Um, 
processing, but I have enough to get an, I don't have enough for another processor though. Only two is kind of sucks. Also no shield at all. Bucklers are 50. Uh, I could get a shield, but then we can't really run everything. Hmm, might be okay actually. Could get by with two. Probably worth. Okay. Checking out the initial area here. Log in. Okay, I'm gonna run immediately. Oh, we need to load our stuff. I forgot to do that. So let's load uh, this one and I uh, will load the blowtorch just in case. But obviously what we're gonna do first before that is, well, we'll load the shield as soon as we need to. All right, so we're in a development center. One of the more dangerous areas, even though we just started. Just in the interest of exploring more stuff. And especially since we should be safe right now, there is a door. Here's another room we can get into. Yes. Service log. A meeting recording. All right. We did manage to get another token there. Hmm. I do like the uh, the graph-based maps and the fact that, you know, there's three different levels there. Okay, this is not going to get through that. Yeah. Okay, so we found two here, just to the east sides of each of these rooms that we can't get through. Man, getting traced there sucked. I think part of the reason, too, I was playing it as if I already had the stealth that I had before. But I hadn't upgraded. Uh, was certain, playing that first map is, is, I guess, it requires slightly different tactics if you were playing it with... Uh, yeah, without that assumption. No better tokens, but I have a couple of user tokens now. For backups. Still looking around what we can find in here. Development center, eh? Seems fairly large. Okay, another access to point to that same room, perhaps. And another one to the room to the north. So there's a room on each side of there. Or a door, entrance doors to um, each side of both of those rooms. And then we're headed into a southeastern section of the same map. Whoa. Um, okay, there's nothing down here. Okay. Time to find out what's in those, what's behind those doors then, I guess. There's nothing else out here. The one to the west of us here, though, is probably isolated. The one to the north might have exits out the other side. Guess we'll check this room first. All right, for this, we're going to have to unload our user token and turn on our buckler and then blowtorch through the door. Twelve percent. Is the other door weaker? Oh, shoot, I can't get back outside to check anyway. All right, fine. <laughs> um... Whoops. Oh, whoops. Wait, oh, I pressed the wrong one. There we go. Oh, I probably just press F. I forgot. Oh, lucky. All right. Hey, we found the syslogs. Yeah, okay. I guess I should have known that was probably the syslogs. <laughs> um, wait a minute. That didn't set off any kind of alarm or anything. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know all about that. Right. The map gen approach for filling rooms pretty much make a prefab spawner, use it for everything. Writing code for correctly rotating mirroring and ASCII prefab is true hell, by the way. Yeah. As you as you know, in Cogmind, there's a, a lot of ASCII prefabs and, yes, a lot of rotation. <laughs> rotation and mirroring, right, both. Um, they are very, uh, very annoying. Especially, I mean, if you're trying to do that during a 7D rail, that would be especially annoying. I would hate that. Being pressured for, on, on something like that, which is really just a technical thing and also kind of boring, <laughs> but also bug prone. And yeah, that's pretty annoying. Especially the rotating. Rotating anything that's also non-square is annoying. <laughs> um, it, and it looks like you do have non-square prefabs here. But yeah, pretty um, pretty useful though. You know, it's great. adds great variety. Okay, so we're kind of, huh. I didn't set up an alarm, which was interesting. And uh, all right, let's check this other side. Can we, is this a weaker side, perhaps? Uh, 42, yeah, it is. We can just go out this side and go on the other doorway. All right, so we know where the syslog is. It's in that room there. 
And then if I want, I could blow this door down and create our trace. Or you know what? I could just turn on, oh, I was going to say turn on a token, but I can't do that yet. I could turn on a token just to get through this door. For that, I would have to unload our buckler, which won't destroy it, right? Yeah, and then load on another user token. Get us through this door. Because I knew there was more than one door, so might as well do that rather than raising our trace. And then get all the way over here and switch back. Turn. We're going to unload that token. Load our buckler again, and then blow our way through this wall, eventually, once it decides to go down. Each time we use... Okay, there it goes. All right. Um, what is in this room? Okay, yes. Found it. The code repository. Oh, nice. I like it. Didn't get to see one of these earlier. And this guy, what are you? A matrix analyzer. Okay, this guy's actually pretty nasty. 22% on this guy. This is the guy that screwed us up last time. All right, I'm going to come over here and check this out. Yep, we're going to hack you right away. All right. Code repository. All right, now... So there must be another side to this room, the east side, which is... There must be a door out of this room, I think. All right, the main question is, am I going... Is this guy going to trace me or am I going to actually kill him in time? Because that took forever last time. Oh, no. Uh oh, a swordsman. A B is a burner. Burner. Burners seek to damage your cyber deck. Hmm. All I have is a blowtorch. All right, what what can I hurt this guy with? What is his chance? There's only 22 on that guy, too. Oh, my God. Something tells me I'm going to get annihilated. All right, so I could retreat out the west, which, honestly, probably safe, and take one of them at a time in the doorway because I'm not powerful. Okay, hardware fault in stealth systems. He literally just took down one of our stealth. Okay, all right. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to pull back again, and I'm going to try to hit him from here. Yes, you crashed. All right, can we crash his friend? Yo, you crashed it. Why could that have happened last time? Last time I went after that matrix analyzer a billion times. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel much better. Okay, yeah, there's the door to the east. That's the one that we have to get through to get to the colonel. That weird room to the south is worth exploring. Oh, is it? For the from the code repository? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, this room's different. Okay, so yeah, this is different from what we saw before. What are these things? Uh, a buckler. Whoa! Tower shield? Buck oh, my gosh. This place. Yes. Did I hack it? Yeah. Code repository access. Code repository. Prototype build access granted. Prototype build. Ooh, wait a minute. What's this on the ground? Stay there. Core nuke. Buckler cracked. It has multiple things. Wait, what's 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 on the floor here? Oh, I have to pick them up or something. Core nuke. Oh yeah, there's multiple things, and it changed what it was showing when I moved. Oh damn, this place is awesome. Wait, what's a core nuke? Something tells me it gives you a lot of trace and annihilate stuff. Oh no, wait, core nuke. Oh, that's how you permanently get rid of stuff in the back rooms, isn't it? Hoo hoo, man. I like this. I'm glad that did another round and you suggested coming to the, co the code repository. This place is cool. All right. So if we look at core nuke here, memory targets, memory cores. It doesn't start. Yeah. What this program is able to use on it doesn't target these guys. It targets the cores in the back rooms. Um, trace cost. Yeah, that's a big trace cost. Load time 800, but allows you to permanently take out one of the cores in the back room. I like this. It is very cool. Okay. A tower shield. Tower shield's like even better than the buckler. We just have to actually load it. I don't have time. I really wish I could load it right now, to be honest. <laughs> anyway. Okay, and there's something else to the south here. What are these? So it looks like things can stack, too. These things. And these are also worth money. We can even sell these when you bring them back. Yeah. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah. I see. So you come to a development center when you want to arm yourself. For taking out other places. Well, that's one thing you can do, obviously. And nice. <laughs> Almost all balanced numbers for non-standard programs are determined by whatever came to mind in a three-hour stretch on the final day. <laughs> uh, anyway, I like them. It's cool. Um, so yeah, the, the, this, this, that's a cool sub room. I was actually... I had been trained after seeing a ton, so many other rooms to ignore these sub rooms, but... Every room has like this back core 
Uh, every main room has like a back core room that's or has the cores for the local ice and systems. But uh, this particular room had two. I didn't uh, notice that right away. This one would be the core room. This is actually an extra storage room in here. So, yeah, good call to stop in here. And now um, I have to kill that guy out there. Not enough time to lo load a tower shield. Uh, I kind of like, I want to pick up the stuff that's in here, but I get like trapped in here by this dude who's now going to annihilate me. All right. You, please just die. Nope. Stealth system's down again. Please don't crash, Blowtorch. Blowtorch. He didn't get to attack me immediately again. Okay, there he goes. Buckler unloaded due to insufficient processing capacity. So I, I would hope it picks like defensive stuff always, or I guess it doesn't have to. It could have picked the Blowtorch. And then that would be annoying because then I have to reload it from scratch. Anyway, um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can restore. I forgot about that. Restore is based on, do I, get to, I don't get to pick though, huh? Oh, it goes into restore mode. So, right, right. Okay, so we can restore using, uh, right, restore. One, two, three. I guess these are for keyboard commands because when you press R, it does the same thing as clicking on this. That's nice. So we can restore our processing power if we want to, or stealth. Honestly, both are kind of important. I can only, I only have redundant, I can only have, what is it, hardening was it? That allows you to restore, I don't remember the stat it was, but uh, I guess it was hardening because redundancy is on this list. Um, yeah, hardening. I can only restore one of these. But that allows me to again load Oh, I'm not trying to restore that. I'm in restore mode. Uh, I already used my hardening. What does it tell me if I try to restore stealth? Yeah, hardening exhausted. Okay, and click restore again to exit the mode. Turn on our buckler. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. I have to restart it up anyway, so maybe I should just not bother with that. Can I, s I can stop that. Start up the tower shield. Tower shield unloaded insufficient. Oh, wait, whoa, this takes more than one. Wait, what? Oh, that took time. I just friggin' got attacked again. <laughs> I thought that loading and unloading was free. Okay, well, that was a waste. All right, you're going down, or you're not going down. One or the other. He's gonna kill me. It's one guy. Yep, okay. With zero processing capacity now. Oh, here comes another friend. All right, I'm stuck. No. Yeah, I'm getting kicked out. Anyway. Oh, but I'm glad we did that. But... That was highly unfortunate. But yeah, I think uh, you probably, I mean, in this game, you don't want to try and rely on chance uh, that are that that low. You want to, you know, stack stack all the odds in your favor and overcome it, which I'm sure you can do. And it's it looks pretty doable. Plus, of course, obviously, the dev here, Elix, has told us it's doable, but I, it looks very doable, too. Certainly not to feel discouraged. First one was a test run. The second run was a, a sprint to the development center to see what they had to offer us. And it's pretty cool. I like the development center. Um, it's a, a way for you to, you know, not have to just pay for individual stuff and can instead, uh, yeah, get a whole bunch of uh, firepower, basically. Although I didn't see what else um, we might get from that. Oh, it said, it said it enabled builds. What does that mean? Could you tell us? Because uh, that's going to be the end. Wait, press enter here. Yeah. It, what does that mean in terms of... Um, Uh, uh, new builds are available. Oh, that's right. I can't actually click on anything here. I was going to let it load so that I could just go back to the shop menu instantly. Can you just do that, right? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, just going to go back to this menu. <laughs> just to have this menu up. Uh, that's granting you a special program. There are five. Oh, so anytime you use a code response, uh, but is that when you get back to... That's when you get back here, they give you a special program or something? And it just gives it to you, or when you get back, or is it what? How do you get that? Uh, yeah, she didn't indicate those numbers somewhere. Action costs are standard actions, but I'm not sure where. Yeah, there's certainly, definitely different mm, action costs to come into play, and time-wise really matters. Oh, core nuke was that one? Okay. Okay, the so core nuke destroys a core forever. Okay, so that, that the one that it gives you was, because it gave us was that one? 
I thought all right. I, I thought that was the one we, one of the ones we found in the room, but I, that no wonder. I, I read and we did read in the help that you know, there is a way to get rid of the core nuke. Sorry, right. destroys the core forever. Transpose swaps positions with something you can see. That's nice. Ping shows all ports and projections on screen. Quicksand, which slows an enemy with a trace cost every ten ticks. Huh. Cool, cool stuff. And, uh, and there's one more. Transpose core nuke. I, I like the idea of core nuke. That's pretty cool. And uh, some, I forgot the last one in my own game. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's cool, though. It's, and it's neat to know what they are. Um, going to go look it up. <laughs> Shows all ports and projections on screen. Wait a minute. Oh, even the ones you haven't discovered or whatever you're you're talking about for oh ports and projections on screen, huh? So it basically yeah, all the ones that kind of like a radar yeah, which through walls uh through the ports as well oh that's that's cool but yeah originally you you couldn't have that in your map memory but you get it from the ping ability it seems I mean because the map memory is also what we're looking for we want to see ports right. Targeting is not LOS. It's anything. Oh, targeting is also not LOS. Anything you can see. Oh, that's actually an, a much bigger benefit there than even. You can just fire. Uh, you can attack things on the other side of. Uh -huh. Oh, you can ping transpose to teleport through walls too. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Uh -huh. I like the, the implications there. Some uh, neat tactics become available. Huh. That's cool. I like the idea there. Development centers. Yeah, this is a, this is a neat game. Um, last one is Surf Stream, which teleports to something's core. Oh, huh. Interesting. Teleports to something's core. How, is that especially useful? I mean, unless you combine it, I guess you want to combine it with core nuke, like go straight to something's core because it's really dangerous and just nuke its core and it goes away and never comes back. Um, otherwise, if you can't nuke its core, it's not probably doing much for you. I mean, other than just putting you in another side room, which you're going to have to face it still anyway. Hmm. But overall, I am a fan of Deckers. Not as useful as I'd want it to be. Uh, mm -hmm. The special programs are not particularly balanced. Ran out of time. Yeah, makes sense. Um, time, always a big factor. So you're going to continue working on uh, Decker, uh, apparently. Or it sounds like you also want to do more with it. Um... Uh, so got some updates. Yeah, I'm just curious if you'd written what else you'd written there. Uh, if I'd forgotten something, but oh yeah, were you, were you going to? I hope to continue on it. Yeah, I've been holding back the scanner update until seventy year old judging completes. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with more other people playing and also the judging and maybe some more feedback or whatever, you can yeah, might even give you more insights and whatnot. But I've, I'm sure your list is long enough already as well. Um, yeah, very cool game though. Uh, as, I know as soon as I saw the pictures when I was looking at this, I said, "Hmm." Well, I mean, I, I, obviously we already talked about you know the, the Cogmind similarities and whatnot, and just but even just ignoring all of that, just the fact that it's uh, it just looks cool, um, and also looks deep and like something that would be enjoyable. So that's also again why I, I knew it would be dumb to try and even schedule four definite games today because I figured I'd spend longer in this one, so I also put it uh, last. Otherwise, if I'd started with this game, we probably would have played it the entire stream. <laughs> but uh, aesthetics are shamelessly cogmine inspired. Well, you know, all uh, in all, it's still all inspired by sci-fi and hacking, right? Um, but yeah, nice. Uh, it's cool to see. I like uh, enjoyed that. I'd like to play it some more. Um, I guess probably not stream it more, but uh, mainly just because to show other seven DRLs instead. But I don't know, maybe if I get better at it and also stream another an actual run of the game, it's pretty cool. I liked it. I considered using Amber Phosphor is totally different. Yeah, <laughs> that's like that's like me back when I was I was making I was working on the Polybot 70 RL and the whole aesthetics of it. And Casper, the artist, when I asked, I approached him to ask if he wanted to do some tiles for it. He was like, 
you know, maybe we should come up with like just some totally different theme in terms of like visual theme for the game, you know, instead of, um, you know, for example, doing multiple, um, multiple colors per tile and stuff like that. You know, the engine wasn't really set up for that either. And anyway, I showed him a mock-up of what I actually I had intended, which was, you know, it's, it's similar in terms of, you know, working with only foreground and background colors, but the whole visual theme also did turn out to be fairly different, especially since I, um, quadrupled the tile size, you know, by having the, uh, having the tile dimensions. I mean, I mean, doubling the tile dimensions, having the number of rows and, or no, I guess having the width and, uh, and height and ever of everything, uh, made everything bigger. And then also changed it to use, uh, uh, was it, uh, uh, be based it wasn't a black background anymore which completely changes kind of the aesthetics of what you're looking at uh so yeah i mean there's only so much you can do but uh you can there's still some alternatives out there but um, anyway uh yeah oh but the, that's the other thing too and uh, talking about amber phosphorus i was thinking of switching to a different color other than green too um and experimented with some of those but in the end i still liked green uh better than the other color options for various reasons, but um, but still made significant enough changes in other ways that Casper said, okay, okay, that, that definitely looks different enough. I'm cool with this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that'll be it for today's stream. Um, just doing one this week, got a lot of other things to do. Um, so, and there's probably, like I said, only one left, uh, 70 year olds, probably. Um, I'm not sure what I'd do after that, though. I mean, I have a lot of things I have planned that I want to stream in the future, but I don't know time-wise uh, when I'll be doing what. So I don't know um, what will happen after that. At least one more, though, with several more uh, that I plan to do. And uh, we'll see what happens beyond that. Otherwise, I'm working on Cogmind stuff. And uh, I got to do taxes this week first. So that's kind of annoying getting in the way. Uh... The non-physical nature of the theme frees you from a lot of typical mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I really, I like that about these, um, yeah, kind of more abstract or in the system type game. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Plus, you know, also, one of, one of the things that I like about this um, sort of theme is it works with the aesthetics um, too. You know, if you make a fantasy game, it doesn't mix as well with ASCII. I mean, you can still imagine it and you can do color schemes that kind of are more reflected and maybe a font. Although, you know, fonts are, are tougher to do in, in a way that's also readable and thematic when the idea of ASCII is supposed to be uh, readability, right? But, um, you know, when you're doing sci-fi, it's just so much easier. It, seem, it seems it's like a perfect fit, sci-fi and ASCII. Um, and hacking and ASCII, even more a perfect fit. So it really frees you up, uh, you know, gameplay-wise and the aesthetics match, which is pretty cool. Um, cyberspace is fairly unexplored. As far as roguelikes go, um, a lot of people want to do more with it, but they just know it is just a lot of people's projects don't seem to get very far, though. Uh, either stop at like a 7 DRL or a prototype stage or, you know, they. I've seen several that people have worked on over a longer period and keep coming back to. But they just never get into an actual like full playable game that they're going to release. Uh, so it is in terms of larger games, very unexplored. Definitely something could... Uh, yeah, spin up into a really big project that could get pretty popular because obviously there's there's demand there for that. Um, people are interested in this kind of theme. Um, so, yeah, keep working on it. I'm excited to see more and uh, know more about, uh, yeah, what other, uh, um, you know, uh, enhancements you make and uh, maybe even expansions to the game. So yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging out and chat. And it's always nice to have uh, the devs come by and be able to talk about their game and give some more insight like that. So excellent. I'm glad you were able to show up. I had it later in the stream. You know, it wasn't at the very beginning. I was hoping that would be okay in your time zone, but I didn't actually ask. So yeah, thanks for showing up and thanks everyone else. And uh, this will be up on YouTube uh, tomorrow as usual. And um, yeah, see y'all next time.